Well, there's been a lot of propaganda that's being foisted upon us in the mainstream media just to take a look at the front page of, of the BBC this morning, saying showing pictures of Ukrainian soldiers standing there holding a flag, you know, taking a photo opportunity in a village that they've captured. Okay, is there truth to that? Did they really capture that village? These images have been showing up on social media sites. So we sent Patrick Lancaster, independent journalist, into the front lines to file this report on one of these villages that Ukraine has captured. And here is what he found. I'm Patrick Lancaster, and we have come back to the village of uh, Novitovizhonka, uh, next to Shebekino, next to the Russian-Ukraine uh, border or front line. There's been very hot fighting in this area. This is the area that we brought the reports from to you, where we showed you how the Ukraine forces claimed control of here, this village, but in fact they're not in control, and Russia is in control. And in the last days, fighting has uh, a decrease compared to a week ago. So we decided to push it as hard as we can to bring you as much information as possible. And we're going to the edge of this village, as close to the front line or the border as possible. Now this is the Belgorod region of Russia bordering the Kharkov uh, region of Ukraine, where intense fighting is happening. And we can see the remnants everywhere. And this is a special update for redacted. <laughs> Poor dog. All right, right now we're in a civilian room in the ed on the edge of Novitovzhonka where we're told by the locals that Ukrainian forces did come in here about a, a week and a half ago and uh, destroyed and went through everything and uh, looted the place. We can see here this uh, family picture of the uh, family holding Russian flag and Victory Day flags. The Ukrainians appeared to poke holes through the faces. Pretty childish, you think. All right, so we just came up to the second floor, and uh, we're told by the locals that the Ukrainians, just for like a, a day maybe, when the heat of the battle was going on here, used the second floor uh, building as a targeting position. Just that way was the uh, Russian positions, and the Ukrainians were here, firing at the Russian positions on the edge of the town. And here on this top part of the floor, uh, they were uh, set up snipers to be shooting up down the road that we were just on uh, when if Russian forces would come up this road. So now we're gonna move on and show you as much as we can, but it's a little bit tense here because we're so close to the front line now. Oh, and another thing. Uh, we found these bullets, it's a five, five, six NATO uh, uh, bullets. Well, Soviet Ukrainians don't make these, don't have them. Uh, believe you can make that out there. If not, there'll be photos posted. All right, so we've uh, reached a, another uh, Ukrainian position, you could say, another civilian home that they use uh, to fire automatic grenade launchers uh, at the Russian uh, uh, forces. Now we can say, tell you this is a, supplied by uh, NATO countries because it has AMMLOTSTL16A006, TAC 0 one six a now that has latin letters so this is not soviet made this is made in the west it's a western weapon supplied to ukraine by the west and used on russian territory which the west forbid 
So let's take a look inside, see what they've done to this civilian home. А вот так вот по приколу, вон, видишь, как натовская еще фея. Вон то, что солдат по-украински. Плюс он сигареточки их не везде. А вот что там это? Пулемет или снайпер с кабинетом? All right, and we see a different uh, firing position here in this uh, uh, home. And we've got more NATO weapons. Now, uh, it's a, it, look, Kiev. So, in identifying this is for Kiev. Bakhmut. And another one simply label one shot, one kill. In good English handwriting. So maybe there's an uh, American or British uh, sniper here using these bullets. And we're left here. And, ah, and let's look at this. This is a pack of, still has some in it, Ukrainian brand cigarettes. All right, and here we see a bed for the, one of the Ukrainian soldiers. Almost a, a nest, you could say. Да, да, они полностью треугольником держали. Это наши российские ребята. Да. А с чего они здесь работали? All right, we came into another uh, uh, house on the same block, and we see behind me it says for Mariupol. Now, this is Ukrainians destroying this home, the civilian home, using it as a military base or a position to where they fire on the Russian army on Russian soil for. And saying for Mariupol, like we saw in the bullets for Kiev, for Bakhmut, all this. No, we heard these. This was around the fourth or fifth. It's... All right. So we're just up the street here in Novotyshenko, and we see a row five Ukrainian uh, anti-tank uh, mines here set in the middle of this residential street on Russian soil in the Belgorod uh, region of Russia. Alright, so now we've got a Belgium-made 5.56 caliber machine gun with a German uh, magazine. Now, this is more Western uh, weapons that are uh, coming across the border from the Kharkov region uh, into uh, Russia, in being used on Russian soil. More weapons that are given to Ukraine and somehow falling in the hands of the R R RDK, or it's just Ukrainian soldiers coming across posing as RDK. We don't really know. The fact is, Western supplied weapons here on the ground, we've seen dozens today. All right, so we see. Right now we are less than a kilometer away from Ukrainian military positions and the border itself. Это всё натовский, да? Да, да, да. Uh-huh. All right, and right now we're in the edge of Novotyshenko, uh, just under a kilometer from the Ukraine-Russian border, and here is some weapons that Ukraine left when they came through this area uh, over a week ago, uh, when they were here just for a small time using civilian uh, homes as uh, military positions. NATO weapons left here by the Ukrainian forces. I'm 
we see the Ukrainians rode here. I'm a NATO soldier. And then when the Russians kicked them out after their short stay here, the Russians whited it out. Uh huh. Netherlands. We found some more NATO weapons here. One of them appears to be written in a Western language. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Comment below if you know. So we've made it to the customs control zone, uh, which is basically the border, very close to it, bordering Belgorod region of Russia and uh, the Kharkov region of Ukraine. And we've found evidence of Ukrainian soldiers. This is a Tatel um, IFF or Identify Friend or Foe. The, the Ukrainians lose, use blue and yellow, the Russians use white and red. So when they see each other on the battlefield, they can tell each other apart and tell that they want to kill each other. That's how it works here. Thanks so much, Patrick, for that report. We appreciate it. And it's important because the, the Western media will just put these pictures up there ad hoc as if, you know, they, they pull them off of Ukrainian social media websites and they publish them as truth. It feels very much like they are appealing to our feelings about it. Like we need to like, you know, when you've had a down day and you just need a win. That's yeah. what Western headlines are doing. Like, it's OK, making some progress. Not a big win, but here's a small yeah, they, one. They've taken a little village. They put up a flag. Uh, yeah. But is that truthful? Is that actually happening? Um, and uh, in this situation, it's it's absolutely not. So we wanted to cover that. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time. Time.